know, when I'm out perch fishing or in search of perch, you get on these big expansive flats out here and you got little either weed clumps or gravel humps and there's just pockets of perch. But when you find them, they're super thick, you know, and it's hard to tell for the forest from the trees. Sometimes there's so many perch down there. Trying to capitalize on those bigger perch that are in the school, I do a couple things. One is upsize, you know, that's a big thing. Going to a jigging wrap, a rip and wrap, a slab wrap, even a bigger profile spoon helps. And then of course, either beating the silt or bring it high in the water column. A lot of those smaller ones don't like to come that high off the bottom because they get ambushed by predators like pike and walleyes and that sort of thing. The other thing is by beating the silt, those little ones can't suck that bigger profile bait out of the mud and you, you tend to pick up the bigger ones because they can, they can feed on that bait either high or low. I'm just gonna upsize my bait a little bit. I like that loud rattle chamber of a rip and wrap. That's a great option. Perch love that real loud and proud baits. And it's amazing how many little ones you'll actually keep off the line so you don't have to keep catching these small ones over and over again. That bigger profile bait, they can't fit in their mouth big ones come in you call them in with that search bait and voila you can start pulling these bigger perch up through the ice one little trick I like to do is put either a few euro larva or a piece of plastic on that front treble hook that way those perch kind of key in on that treble hook otherwise they're biting the head of the bait you know they'll they'll, they'll start just attacking the head or the eye but if you put a little red euro larva on there or a little piece of plastic they'll key in on that that front treble, it just helps for better hookup percentage. Right there. Decent perch. But see how they key in on that front treble hook? Get a close up of the mouth. They're almost always gonna hit that either plastic or euro larva when it's on there. It just it gives them that, that point to look at and, and attack. There we go. Decent fish. Again, upsizing those baits, whether you like using a horizontal bait, you know, a rip and wrap, a, a jigging wrap, even a bigger jigging spoon for that matter. Just upsizing those baits helps to stay away from those smaller ones. And then of course, in, encourage these bigger ones to come up. Now fishing high in the water column is key, especially in these clear glacial lakes. They can see that bait from afar. You know, like I said, it's a big flat, but there's little nuances, there's little depressions. And if you're fishing right near the bottom all the time, those fish can't see that bait from afar. So keep it high in the water column, upsize those baits, and you're gonna put bigger fish on the ice. You know, one of my favorite horizontal hard baits in the winter would have to be a slab wrap. What I love about the slab wraps is they just catch everything. They come in three different sizes. They really imitate that young of the year forage species, you know, so that you can really not only dial in the color, but you can also dial in the size of that forage species. That varies from lake to lake, from body of water to body of water. And once again, it's just a great fish catching tool. I don't care if you're after crappies, bluegills, perch, walleyes, or pike, everything seems to love the slab wrap. The jigging cadence really is, is pretty simple. You know, I, I like that slow raise where I'm really popping that bait, but raising it slow. You can also go to a rip. So, as the fish are approaching the bait, I'll go to that really light bounce, much like you would with a spoon or something. But then as soon as the fish start to go down or they lose interest or say there's nothing on the screen, I'll give it a few big rips high in the water column. I think that draws them into the location. And because it's more of a subtle bait than a rip and wrap, it really complements the, the two fish great together. You know, you can have two tied up at the same time. You know, you can use either the, the, the quietness of the slab wrap or you can go to that really loud rattle chamber of the rip and wrap. And even though they're both horizontal baits, they fish quite a bit differently. This one will swim a little bit more like a jigging wrap, whereas, you know, the, the rip and wrap will fall like a jig. So, you know, by, by doing that where you're ripping it up in the water column, letting it fall back down, you're getting the vibration in the water, but you're not, you know, you, you don't have that big loud rattle chamber. Generally speaking, you know, if, if you're fishing in an area where you've got a lot of forage species around, you know, I like to fish where there's a lot of bait fish around because that'll draw in predator fish. And of course they see that bait and it's a slow moving, easy prey for them. Because it has that swimming action, similar to a jigging wrap where it's moving in the water column, I like to add the swivel on there. I think that's really important to have a little swivel 
Uh, it, it'll prevent the line twists. I don't like it when that bait's sitting down there, especially if you stop the bait. I don't like it when it sits down there and spins. Right now I've got four pound tests rigged up. I'm using a smaller slab wrap today. With the smaller sizes, I tend to use that four pound test. And even though it's four pound test, it's really abrasion resistant. This advanced mono has low stretch and it's really, really abrasion resistant near the hole. You don't have to worry about breaking off on a pike or a walleye. Now, if I'm upsizing my slab wrap to use like a number six, I can get away with six or even eight pound test. And I just have total control over that bait. When you're working these baits, you want them to totally puppeteer. You don't want any sort of memory in your line. You don't want any coiling. And of course, when you stop that bait, you don't want that spinning. I fish a wide variety of, of waters, varying from very, very, very clear to darker water with the slab wrap. So, um, you know, kind of the color spectrum that I really like is, you know, everything from those real natural colors like yellow perch to shiner, minnow, um, even crayfish patterns at times. And then I also like that real stark contrast of those bright colors, like those really bright UV colors, like the green UVs, the pink UVs. Um, I just like that whole color spectrum so I can bounce back and forth varying from, you know, extreme clear water to that dark water because just because it doesn't have that rattle chamber doesn't mean the fish can't see it they can't feel that vibration and in those darker waters i i really lean heavily on those uv colors there we go once again the slab wrap it's just a great multi-species bait now i'm using a perch colored slab wrap catching perch they're cannibals they'll eat anything that swims so it just it, it it's the perfect match, you know, when you're looking at those young of the year species. I mean, there's no other profile that I can think of that's more natural than that slab wrap in a horizontal bait.